so this video is going to be all about new game plus uh basic overview what changes you're going to see in it what carries over what doesn't carry over and you know some stuff that i think that you should probably do before you jump into that new game a lot of people spent about 80 to 100 maybe a little over 100 hours to run through their first playthrough of Elden ring me uh, it took about 260 hours but a lot of that was because I wasn't ready to jump into New Game Plus yet. And there's a lot of stuff that you should be doing, a lot of stuff you should be getting done before you make that jump. And so that's what I did. And then I realized after doing all that that is, there's quite a few things that you probably should do that a lot of players won't do or even think about doing before they jump into the next game. And they'd be missing out and, or make their New Game Plus a little harder. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I want to share some of those things I did that you should probably think about before you jump into a New Game Plus. So let's just jump into it. Now, New Game Plus, in case you aren't really familiar with it, is essentially a mode you unlock after you beat the final boss, and you'll get an opportunity to take your current save with all your inventory, um, most of your items, and you start a new game carrying those things over. So, after you beat the final boss, and you choose an ending, and then the credits roll, you'll be given an option to start Journey 2, which is basically New Game Plus. Or you can stay in your current world if you choose no, which is what I did, and I, I do recommend that. Now, if you chose yes, then you're just going to start your new game plus and you're going to be off to the races. But if you chose no, you're going to be teleported right back to the last grace you rested at and you're just going to keep playing your current world. But when you are ready to take the plunge into journey two, you're going to want to head to the round table hold and then rest at the grace there. Once you go there and you rest at the table of lost grace, you'll see it in the menu. Begin journey two. And there you go. Keep this in mind though, once you start journey two, you are not coming back to your previous game. Everything that you have now is getting carried over and you're starting brand new. But what's different? Well, every time you kill an enemy in the game, they're gonna have more health, they're gonna deal more damage, and you're gonna get more runes for the effort of killing them. Simple as that. And all these new game plus changes, they all scale up with every new game plus you get into, but they cap out at new game plus seven, so there's really no need to continue after that. New game plus eight, nine, ten, it's all gonna be the same stats based off of new game plus seven, so you should think about that too if you wanna keep going. Now, I said earlier that most of your player progress is gonna carry over into new game plus, so let's talk about that real quick. Your character level, the runes you hold, armor, weapons, Ashes of War, incantations and sorceries, talismans, most consumables and reusable items, all your gestures, certain key items, yeah, oh, the amount of flasks, the flask level that's going with you too, map fragments and the discovered locations, and any notes you bought from the merchants. That stuff's all carrying over into New Game Plus. Now, when I'm talking about reusable items, I'm specifically talking about the ones that unlock game features, like the Spectral Steed Ring for summoning Torrent, or the Spirit Calling Bell for summoning the Spirit Ashes and the Crafting Kit. Now, when it comes to things that are not going to transfer over, you're going to be looking at things like Great Rooms, quest-related key items like Mikola's Needle, quest-related reusable items like the Pure Blood Knight's Medal, medallions for all the grand lifts if you got them, bell bearing, and this is kind of a big one because it's directly tied to the twin maiden husks that you run into at the round table. So without the bell bearings, you can't buy anything unique from them. She's basically, they are basically a regular old merchant now, which means you have to basically go out and get every single bell bearing again. You won't see any NPC quest line progress transfer over, no NPC related notes, or letters, mending runes, and those are important for the endings. Any sites of grace, you gotta rediscover every single one. Summoning pool stakes, painting puzzle clues, not a single sorcery scroll or prayer book, eye cosmetics. What do you think? Whoa, very nice. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. What do you think? Nice. But wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. White. Impressive. Very nice. Mm. Let's see Paul Allen's. Oh my god. Stuff like the Frenzied Flame and the Dragon Incantations, Equipment of Champions. Uh, this is the stuff you get at, how do you say it? Inia, Inia's shop. Uh, that stuff's related to when you beat a boss and then you can go buy their equipment from her over in the round table. Kiss it goodbye. 
Okay, so now that we know what's going on with us in New Game Plus and what's not coming with us, and we know there's a difficulty spike, what should you do to prepare for the jump in difficulty? All right, so here's what I recommend. Level up your character as much as you can. Like I said earlier, there's definitely going to be a spike in HP and damage output from all the enemies, so you're going to want to invest as much as you can into leveling up your character. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you what level you should get to because everybody's build is different and everybody's play style is different, but whatever your level is currently by the time you get to the end, try to get it up as much as you can because when you start New Game Plus, you're not going to have any of the usual rune spots to farm at. Just another thing you're going to have to re-unlock. Prepare as many upgrade materials for a new build as you can. Some people are gonna just wanna start a new game plus with their current build since they worked so hard to get it and they wanna see what it's gonna be like with this new challenge mode. But, but a lot of players might just wanna start a new game plus with a new build. And so you're likely gonna have equipment on your hand that you didn't use before that's not leveled. So now's a good time to level that stuff up because you know you wanna use it for a different build. So make sure you stock up on smith and stones, ghost glove wards, grave glove wards, cause you're gonna need that stuff if you're gonna upgrade things you're curious about for a new build. Which brings us right along to making sure you collect every plus 10 and every plus 25 upgrade material you can some of them are hard to get but you probably missed a few that are right out in the open and a lot easier to grab make sure you grab each one you can because they are limited per playthrough ancient dragon smithing stones somber ancient dragon smithing stones great ghost glove wards great grave glove wards they are all limited so you want to make sure you grab all the ones in case you missed a few because they're finite and you can stock up on the other stuff but you cannot if you want to max out weapons you want to play with on another playthrough and make sure that you buy or secure any key items you can get your hands on. Stuff like stone sword keys, larval tears. I mean, if you want to respect, you're going to need those. And all the crafting cookbooks. Believe it or not, there's some really good items that you can craft that are locked behind a couple of these books. So you don't want to miss those. All the physics tears. There's a bunch of them out there that if you get the right combination together, you can create something that's really useful for a short amount of time. Don't miss it. Don't miss any of them. Now, for my playthrough, I never really used the ritual pots or the perfume bottles or the crack pots. But you should definitely get those too. And and if you miss any of the memory stones or the talisman pouches, you can't be no Elden Lord without them. So get them if you missed them. And while you're out there grabbing key items, you need to make sure to collect any weapons, ashes of war, sorceries, incantations, all that. You want to make sure you get it, especially the weapons. Um, you, you want to make sure you collect all the weapons you're interested in because your first playthrough is the easiest, obviously, of all the other two games you're going to come to. So take advantage and make sure to get any weapon that maybe there's only one of in this playthrough. That way you can power stance it if you wanted to, depending on your build in the next one. And I'm going to be honest with you, there's a lot of incantations and sorceries and ashes of war and i barely use any of them my first playthrough especially the ashes of war i mean once i got the mimic tier didn't use anything else i think i've used a grand total of four and that's including the mimic tier and with all the sorceries and the incantations i was locked out of most of them because of my play style and my build collect any equipment for new builds and that even goes down to buying all the armor sets that you get from beating the bosses get them from inaya 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 i have your surname make sure you get everything from wherever you haven't gotten it because this stuff will be really important if you decide to switch builds and there'll probably be some equipment out there that's better suited for certain builds so you want to make sure you get that stuff otherwise if you didn't get it now you're going to get it a new game plus after you beat them again and it might be harder and they might be farther away so just just do it now and use any remembrances that you're sitting on I was guilty of this on my first playthrough. I had a couple of them sitting around because I knew what I would get from using it and it didn't really seem that interesting or didn't even really suit my play style or I couldn't use it anyway because I was locked out for my build. Uh, use them, make sure you use them. If you don't do it now, then you're gonna have to reacquire the remembrance from the boss again, beating them again in New Game Plus, same thing, before you can use whatever was locked behind them in the first place. So just use them now and get whatever it is the item uh, that you would receive from the remembrance. And make sure you collect any of the limited crafting items that are in the game. There's a bunch of Elden Ring items that don't respawn even if you reset the overworld. These are limited items, you wanna make sure you get them. There's a bunch of good ones out there. A good example is the Sacramental Bud. You'll see them scattered around the game. And they're a key item for crafting the Preserving Boluses, which cure Scarlet Rot. And that doesn't maybe sound like a big deal depending on how you play, but for me, it was a lifesaver. There's a point in the game later on towards the end where I used basically every single one I had to get through a part of the game where Scarlet Rot was something that was unavoidable. So if you don't get the ones you have here, you're basically locked out of crafting Preserving Boluses ever again until New Game Plus. So you might want to get them while you're here. Another good example of one is the Bewitching Branch. If you've never heard of that, I sure as hell didn't. But the Bewitching Branch was a really helpful item to help me beat Commander Nile or Commander Nial. 
however you say his name he hammered my head flat for like 30 or 40 deaths and it drove me crazy and i just didn't know what to do then i found out as long as you have bewitching branches if you use them on an enemy it turned them against one another and so commander nile he brings up two knights to fight alongside him i threw the bewitching branch at both of those dudes and then they worked for me and then i casted my ash of war and then we jumped them and it was great bewitching branches Get them all while you can, like right now, the second. And for goodness sakes, make sure you cap out the flask count and the potency. Upgrade your flask to plus 12 and get that flask count to 14. This way you're better prepared for all the damage you're gonna be taking and dealing with when you get to New Game Plus. And then you don't have to deal with hunting down golden seeds and sacred tears on the next playthrough. If you're gonna respec before you jump into New Game Plus, make sure to speak to Renala, redistribute those points for a new build and hopefully, if you've been listening thus far, you'll have some new equipment to play with and equip. You'll have some new weapons that are upgraded and ready to roll. That way it's a nice transition for them. And last but not least, consider what kind of ending you want to shoot for this time. I wasn't really happy about the ending I got, but knowing there's several other different endings you can get kind of makes it a nice thing to shoot for on a new game plus. So think about that stuff too. But now I want to hear from you guys. Is there any other things that you would want to recommend before you jump into a new game plus? Anything I miss? Anything you guys want to add? What have you guys been doing? What are you guys doing for it? How many times have you guys beaten the game already? All that stuff. Let me know in the comments below. If you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for listening. On your way out, drop a like that lets me know if this was of a, you know, a good value to you and lets me know if I should keep making more of these or not. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Later.